So we called complete complete safe food list for bearded dragons. Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we're doing a video that I have been meaning to do for a while, but it's just a lot. So, so we're gonna be talking about safe foods for bearded dragons. We're gonna be talking about what they are, quickly going over how to prepare those foods and about whether or not you can feed them all the time or if you can only feed them a treat. We're gonna be going over all of the details. Just a disclaimer, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a most commonly fed vegetables list. And another disclaimer, I live in the United States and I know a lot of these are not called what we call them in other countries. And I am so sorry if that's the case. I don't know what other places call things and I, would like to apologize for that. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by IR Gecko, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. So first, vegetables. Let's talk about vegetables that can be fed daily. So the first veggies that we're gonna talk about are all the leafy greens and specific kinds of lettuces. These should be the base of your salad that you make. One or two would be fantastic if you could do that daily. These are things like mustard greens, collard greens, turnip greens, dandelion greens. Dandelion greens are usually bitter dragon's favorite. You can actually feed the flowers of dandelions too. You don't have to just feed the greens and endive. The only real preparation that you need to do for those is just to cut them up into little bite-sized pieces. And I also like to cut the stem off of it just because it's big and kind of difficult to chew, difficult to digest. I actually cut the stems off and feed them to my feeders, to my doogie roaches and mealworms and superworms and all of those. They all get the stems when I chop it up. Huge tip here that I have found out over the years, if you buy the uncut thing of greens and cut it up yourself and put it into a freezer bag in the bottom of your refrigerator, it lasts about three times longer than if you buy the pre-cut vegetables that are already in the bag and washed and everything. Cutting them up yourself will last a whole lot longer and usually it's about half the price. Then we have squashes. These also can be fed every single day. These are things like butternut squash and acorn squash, spaghetti squash, yellow squash. They are amazing to just put on top of the bed of leafy greens because they are brightly colored. So they're adding a contrast to the greens that you're feeding. These do require a little bit more preparation though, as opposed to the greens because these are usually going to have to be softened in some way. So you have a few different options here. Number one, you can go to the freezer department of any grocery store and just buy the pre-cut organic cubes of squash. They're usually in like the little microwavable bags. Those you just put into some warm water and defrost the cubes into warm water and they're super soft and you can feed them that way. If you want to go the fresh route, you have a couple different options there as well. You can either cut them up and boil them to make them soft, or you can just use a cheese grater and just grate the squash on the cheese grater and it makes very thin, small pieces that are soft enough for your bearded dragon to consume and small enough for them to consume. Just make sure you are not giving them the hard chunks of the uncooked squash. Now let's move on to the vegetables you would feed more occasionally. So by occasionally, I just mean not every single day. To elaborate a bit more here, since occasional is such a loose term and not daily is super broad, you can just do each one of these like once a week. So maybe one day you offer a little bit of one on the salad and the next day you offer a little bit of a different one of these on the salad. Just mix it up, variety is key. This category is pretty large, but that's okay because if you are mixing up your Bearded Dragon's food, it provides a huge array of different things that you could be putting on there. In this category, we have things like carrots and bok choy, bell peppers, Zaz loves bell peppers, asparagus, artichoke hearts, celery, cucumber, kale. I often say do not make kale a staple, but you can feed it occasionally. Lentils, sprouted lentils are usually pretty favorited amongst bearded dragons. Don't feed them every single day, but they're awesome because you just take lentils, which are super cheap. You soak them in water, put them in a wet paper towel, and you just leave them on your counter for a couple days and they will sprout and you can just throw those in your bearded dragon salad. Rodicio, okra, cilantro, zucchini, and even yams. If it's anything that is larger in size, like the asparagus or the pumpkin, make sure again that they are in small bite-sized pieces. And if it's hard, like raw pumpkin, make sure that you are either using a cheese grater and shredding it 
or boiling it to where it gets soft enough for them to eat. And as for fruits, because bearded dragons are supposed to have a little bit of fruit in their diet, basically all of them are going to be occasionally. Giving a bearded dragon too much fruit, it's very sugary and it can lead to obesity. The only fruit that is pretty okay to give every single day is prickly pear. These are actually what bearded dragon bites are made out of, which is what I usually suggest if your bearded dragon is having a hard time eating. But most other fruits are okay. Like I mentioned in my dangerous food video that I did a couple months ago, you do want to avoid things like citrus, anything that's high in acid. You want to avoid giving them that just because it will give them an upset stomach. There's a whole lot of unsafe Things. Don't feed your bearded dragon anything that's toxic, like any kind of ivies or plants that you find outside, unless you know what you're doing. Don't give them avocados. Try to avoid things, again, like citrus. I'm gonna leave an entire list of safe and unsafe fruits and vegetables down in the description below. And that list also shows you if you need to cook it or not, and if you need to chop it up into smaller pieces. It also shows some of the nutrition facts of each of those fruits and vegetables as well. So make sure to check that out and definitely bookmark that website and refer to it if you ever have questions, because that's what I do. And now let's talk about some popular bug options for bearded dragons. The first one and probably the most popular one is going to be crickets. Crickets are a good staple. They are not my favorite for a few different reasons. They are not very filling. It takes a lot of crickets to fill up your bearded dragon. They are kind of stinky to keep. They aren't great house guests. They're very loud. They also many times come with parasites and can increase the risk of your bearded dragon getting parasites. But but if crickets are the only thing that you have access to, then you can use crickets. Just make sure that you are getting them from a safe, reliable source. I've never had issues with Josh's Frogs crickets. I have had issues with pet store crickets and never ever get them from like bait stores or like Walmart where they're selling crickets to go fishing with. Probably the second most popular option is going to be roaches. In a lot of places, it's going to be doobie roaches. Doobie roaches are super high in protein. They're super filling. They are so much better to keep. This sounds like an ad read. It's not an ad read. <laughs> they're so much better in my opinion to keep than crickets because they're not noisy. However, if you live in a place like Florida or I think Hawaii where doobie roaches are actually illegal, you also have the option of discoid roaches. Discoid roaches look pretty similar to doobie roaches. They are nutritionally very, very similar to doobie roaches. Keeping them is very, very similar to doobie roaches. They don't climb smooth surfaces. They are very quiet. If you have access to neither of those, you also have the option of red runners. Red runners, I can't, <laughs> I can't handle red runners, but a lot of people feed red runners to bearded dragons. Petco from the Dark Den uses these for his tarantulas because they move very fast and tarantulas like that. Bearded dragons also like that. Red runners are very nutritious. The thing with red runners is they get out, they will infest your house. They will reproduce quickly and they can take over. And I'm not running that risk, especially having kids in my house. That's something that you feel confident will not happen, escapes, then red runners are also an option. Moving on to worm feeders. Silkworms are by far the best. They are very nutritionally sound. However, silkworms are hard to find, at least where I'm at, they're hard to find. And they are a little bit more expensive, but many people that don't want to deal with things like roaches and crickets, usually go with a mixture of worms and silkworms are one of those options. For baby bearded dragons, you have black soldier fly larvae. They're super tiny. You can give them to adult bearded dragons, especially on salads. They really, really like that and it encourages them to eat it because the salad will move around. But as a staple for adult bearded dragons, they're a little small. They are so high in calcium that you don't even have to dust them. You can just feed them as is and they're pretty easy to keep alive. So then we have mealworms and superworms. These worms are not the best. Mealworms have a very high ratio of chitin. They have a lot of shell and not a lot of nutrients to back up that amount of shell. And if the conditions in your tank aren't perfect, that high amount of shell can be difficult for bearded dragons to digest, especially baby bearded dragons, and it could cause impaction issues. If you have to feed mealworms to your bearded dragon, I highly suggest feeding the white ones, the freshly molted ones, because they're all soft and they're gonna be super easy for your animal to digest. Superworms are another option. They're kind of high in fat, 
because they're a bit bigger, their outer shell ratio to innard ratio is going to be a little bit better than mealworms. It's going to be easier for them to digest because superworms are only going to be fed to adults. They are kind of high in fat. Definitely make sure that you are feeding other things as well. And then we have wax worms and butter worms. These are definitely high in fat. They should really only be fed as a treat. And in keeping wax worms, I'm not completely sure about butter worms, but in keeping wax worms, you have to keep them at a very, very specific cold temperature or else they will die. If they are kept too warm, they're going to turn into moths. If you have an animal that will eat the moths, then that's cool. Otherwise, feeding them as a treat, unless you have a lot of animals to give treats to, it could kind of be a bit wasteful. And the last bug we're gonna talk about, obviously there's a lot more feeder bugs that exist, but the last one that we're gonna talk about is hornworms. Hornworms are usually another favorite of bearded dragons. With Zaz, she did not like these until she was an adult. And I've learned from comments that this is kind of the case with other bearded dragons too. Not all of them, just some other bearded dragons. They can get really big. As with all of the bugs on here, make sure that you're not feeding anything that is bigger than the size between their eyes. They are very high in water content. So if your bearded dragon is having a hard time using the bathroom or they haven't used the bathroom in quite a while, go buy some size appropriate hornworms for them and usually that will fix that. But that is all that I have for this week's video. Let me know down in the comments below what your beer dragon's favorite food is. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is an awesome place to get conversion kits for tanks that you may have laying around to convert them into front opening tanks. Reptiles generally prefer to be reached in at and grabbed from the front as opposed to from above because in the wild, their predators will grab them from above. So they like to be reached in at from their face regions, <laughs> front opening tanks make that easy to do. So taking your animal out is more comfortable for them and less stressful for them. Super easy to install, takes five minutes and then you let it dry. Once it doesn't smell like silicone anymore, then it's good to go. It is good to use and these things last. They're absolutely fantastic. Make sure if you do order one of these conversion kits, you leave Else Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for continuing to sponsor these videos. If you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout is here, and this week's subscriber shout out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following and commenting and subscribing and sharing and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Test, test. Okay, I think we're good. Hopefully this isn't too low. Okay. So, so the first, so the first daily things. So the first thing, if you buy a, the uncut, head, it's not a head of lettuce, thing of greens. If you buy the, um, crickets, dubias, superworms, mealworms, black soldier fly larvae, 